Okay, then we are. Okay, so we are uh, live here on YouTube. Now let's get the audio going. Three, two, and one. Welcome or welcome back, everyone, to Aaron's Opinion, podcast for blind people, where we speak about critical issues in the blindness community and all of the issues from across the universe and galaxy. All right, then. Well, let's head over to Germany today, where we're actually speaking. We have the distinct honor and privilege to be speaking to Aziz VI's manager, recording re- recording, uh, uh, re- recording artist, recording agent, however you look at it. Laman joins us today from Caraba Productions all the way in Germany. First of all, great honor to have you on the show. Start out, I would say, by saying, you know, here's how I usually start out. So who is Laman, for one thing? And then who and what is Caraba Productions? And what can you tell me about um, the music industry in Germany and how your company works and how uh, all the ins and outs? So let's go into the deep dive. So go ahead and I will interject as I need to. Your hour starts now. Yeah, um, first of all, I would try to say thank you very much for having me. And You're very welcome. And um, my name is Lamin. I come from Gambia. You know, I live in Germany for almost 18 years now. So um, I do music and I'm a producer too. I do production. I met Aziz here in Germany and um, do a couple of music with him and then decide to have an EP that we're releasing on the 27th. So music in Germany in general is is verse is big it's huge it's just like US but US bigger than it um, doing reggae music doing African music which is Afro reggae or Afro beats and um, Afro fusion with different artists kind of our production is mainly for people who don't have this chance to showcase their talent. So I try to scout them with a um, couple of my friends who are also in the industry as selected stars. So um, yeah, we try to give those people the voice, you know, to showcase their talent. Basically music in Germany, I definitely do most of my music and then for Africa, and uh, most of the artists that I produce also are Africans. Most of them are in Africa. So Aziz is one of those who are here that I produce. And um, I definitely love music personally and use music as aggression to showcase our problems and try to reach you know, many people as we can and uh, give the voice to people who have no voice or voiceless. Those who may know want to speak out, but they don't have this chance. So we give them that chance to speak out. Beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful and a perfect way to get going today. So good. So Laman, how in, in your own life and for you, you know, you're clearly someone who loves music. How did you first get involved in music, like yourself in general? Like what, what first got, how did you get your foot in, in, into the door and, and, and how did you get your feet wet in the industry of music in the first place? Well, I, I was an artist before doing production. I was singing myself um, back in days at the age of 17, I start. You know, I have a couple of songs which are out there. I do some reggae songs with um, Phantom Moja in Jamaica, and um, then I switched to be a production, to production. So basically, I've been into music since I'm young because our surrounding is music, you know, in, in Africa. So we use music, you know, for to, to, to advocate, you know, to, to speak out politically and so many things and to try to bring people together. You know, so I've been into music since I was young. So I just turned it to be to production now now that I'm doing that in Germany. That's wonderful. That's that's so good. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. You're you're absolutely right. And of course, you know that I heard uh, Aziz. Aziz has already been on the show and I've heard his music and it is so beautiful. 
I, I love, absolutely love everything about the the music from Gambia and hearing Aziz sing in in, uh, in a mandinke and his language, his local language. It's so beautiful and so soothing and so just so cheerful and so uplifting. It really, it, it really is is truly medicinal. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, that's that's really good. You know, I mean, you're you're in Germany now, but what do you know about currently speaking the music industry in Gambia for people who are musicians in Gambia? Like, what what have you heard from Gambian producers who are living in Gambia now? Well, music right now in Gambia is growing up. It's a industry that is very fresh. Mm -hmm. It's now picking up and the artists are doing good, the productions are doing good. There have been musics that out there which are making, taking attention of the, the, the audience. And um, I think moreover, music in Gambia is definitely going out good. People are embracing it and most of the people outside beyond the borders are now embracing it, accepting it, loving it. You know, and it's doing very good in so much of uh, platforms out there. So I think uh, productions are doing very, very good there because they are, we have a couple of productions in Gambia which are outstanding and they have hit songs out there. And that, yeah, uh, I, I, I feel like we need a couple of years to, to work hard, you know, to be among those top, top, top productions out there, you know. But um, the people are doing good in music. We have good, good productions out there, and they are doing very good. Very good. That's wonderful. So what brought you to Germany? You know, Aziz told his very interesting story, but what specifically brought you out of Gambia and brought you into Germany originally? Well, um, I'm here basically with my family. You know, it's family that brings me here, my wife, and um, basically I have a kid. You know, so I then decided to to join them here and and and, and end up staying. You know, so I, I met my wife and yeah, I was here for a holiday. Then I met my wife. You know, it became an everlasting thing. So we we grounded and we love a family. So I decided to stay. Since then, I'm here. You know, I then go back home and time sometimes and then get, come back here and stay with your family. Yeah, yeah. And it's really fascinating. Do you ever um, do you ever go back to Gambia like every few years, just, just to go back and visit people and visit the country? Uh, almost every year. Oh, almost, almost every year. That's great. Almost yeah. every year. You know, I used to go like twice in a year. Mm -hmm. Beginning of the year, I go, and the end of the year, I always go, because I have my parents over there, my father is there, my siblings are there, so... Obviously, that is home. So I'm always there. I'm connected to Gambia. And, you know, so I, we're not far from Africa. We're not far from home. And we always try to be part of it, you know, even that's, though we are, we are abroad. That's, that's beautiful. I, I completely agree. Um, and then what what can you tell me in general about opening companies in Germany? You know, what, what steps did you take to open Caraba Productions? And what are all of the you know, ingredients of, of a company. And, and tell me about that journey and process of actually opening your recording agency. Um, actually, um, Carabar is not so long. I just started a couple of months ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah, this year, I you know I, I started Level Carabar Production, you know, because I also met some brothers who are here, Taffy and Martin. Um, they are musicians, live instrument players. So this encouraged me to go in for a, a production myself and try to build up something which I can I can help my people, especially people like Aziz, you know, people who definitely need our help. You know, they have talent and they need our help. So since then, I'm on it. I Aziz is is one of the artists that I release. Now, and you know, towards December, I'm gonna release some couple of artists also. They are their EPs and songs will follow up, you know. But you know, everything that I'm doing right now is new, and you know, I'm just starting the journey. And I think 
you know, it's gonna flourish and it will it will go good because the beginning is 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 a good story that I, I I'm getting. I'm getting a good good feedback from what we're mm-hmm. doing with Aziz and 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 yeah, <laughs> others too. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you did you have a chance to to listen? Um, because if 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 you if you would like, you can go back here at Aaron's opinion and actually listen to my episode with Aziz, where I incorporate his music into the episode and I give the listener some some tracks there. So it's just it's just his music fits in so well into it, mm-hmm. it is you know I mean I mean it, it's it's really not your imagination. I also noticed it too. His Aziz's music is really good. And it really like has just this like perfect flavor. There's something just so like mm-hmm. so strong and gentle about it at the same time. You know, it's, it, there's something magical about it. It, re- it really is true. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's yeah. that's that's really really fat. Now, by the way, are you are you blind or sighted or you know what what is your uh, vision uh, si- uh, situation? I'm sighted. I see. That is I'm, that is fine. I wasn't yeah. I wasn't sure, but that's that's really wonderful. And I, I think it really um says a lot about your strong character, the fact that you're willing to open a open a company to help people with disabilities. You know, that's that's that is a really good thing to do. You know, even if even if Aziz was wasn't a musician, and if he was like, I don't know, an artist or if he was a painter or something like that, and you still helped him out, I would yeah. still say that's that's a great thing to do for people. It's a tremendously good thing. Yeah. Real, real. You know, um, I, I think meeting Aziz also make me more open-minded. You know, it makes me learn a lot about humanity. Mm-hmm. It, makes me, it makes me know the other side of it because if you are not disabled, you don't know what they feel. You know, so if but if you got somebody very close to you. Um, like Aziz, you know, you learn a lot from them. So you see how you and them are equal in life, you know. Even though for you personally, you mean they are disabled. For me, it's not disabled. You know, it's, it's, it's someone who is capable of doing something that you can do, like what Aziz can do. Aziz can sing beautiful. You know, beautiful, and that, absolutely yeah, beautiful, and this very talented person is 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 intelligent, and you know he advocates so many things. You know, like he want he want put some changes. You know, you want to see changes the way people handle disabled people in our country, and these are things that motivate me because I know through music he can do that. He can he can speak louder. And he can reach so many people and let them understand that you know disability is not inability. So, which means you got to give those people the chance to be who they want to be, you know. And they can also do things that you think they cannot do. And because it's totally a different story when you look at Africa, the way disabled people are, and when you come to West and you see the opportunities that they got here. Um, to showcase their talents. So these this, this chances are not there. You know? So for him having that chances here, I think it's a very good thing because it will help back home. You know? It will make so many families you know, to, to look up to him you know, and mentor him, so many kids. And so I think supporting that part of it is really good. It's something good. And I feel very good to be part of that. And I'm, I'm so happy that I have this chance to work with him. And and yeah. I feel really and I feel really happy to also have worked with him to help him to share his voice with my audience all over the world too. It's it's just so positive and so it, it's 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 just the right thing to do for sure. So, you know, when you when you look at a musician whether they're whether they're blind or not, what are some what are some elements that you have found that really um, sell well in, in the music industry in general and, and, and in the market? You know, what, what are the elements of a great song that you look for just from your, you know, your side of the microphone as the producer? You know, what do you really look for in, in a song? Um, for me personally, it's, it's about the artist. You know, what kind of stories that you hear, 
which mm -hmm. he himself is related to, that he want to sell to his listeners. You know, because um, there is so much songs out there which, you know, people will sing them just to get them out there, but they have nothing to do with it. You know, they are not related to, or they don't want to do it to change, you know? So for me personally, it's about that artist himself, his speech or the way he painted himself into that song, and who is the listeners he want to reach to, which genre he want to listen, uh, reach to, you know? So I think positive musics are one of those which will move me a lot. Music that will touch people and bring changes in their life and they will feel it. You know, songs that will unite people, songs that will bring love, you know, and songs that will make you change your mind from doing something bad, you know? So, um, and as this fit into those kind of music, because this is the kind of things, he have his personal stories and when he's bringing it, you can feel that. You know, so I feel those kind of music. So when I listen to him, I almost feel everything that he's singing. Yeah, I I think I understood you. That's what I felt too. I felt it. I feel, when when I listen to it, I feel it too. It's like I, it's like it's like Aziz is like sitting next to me in the office telling me the story. Exactly. Like, I it's not your imagination, and you are not exaggerating. I felt it too. It's really weird. But just certain artists are just so gifted and just su and su such great people. That's yeah. the other thing, too, about Aziz is that, and I've said this about other great musicians, even if Aziz didn't sing at all, he's mm -hmm. still a really nice person. He's, a, he's just a great personality to be friends with. He's just a great and strong friend. And I, I think that's what really, really seeps through is his kindness and his strength is, is, what, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. You've been talking a lot today about e EPs. And by the way, I've been seeing a lot of commercials, you know, on uh, Artist Way, no problem. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot of uh, commercials on uh, Aziz's um, fade, you know, on his page, you know, you put out some reels uh, mm -hmm. on, on watch and things like that, which I saw, in fact. So I, I, I'm, I'm a little, on one hand, I'm, I'm a little confused about this. And so I think our listeners are a little confused too. So let's mm -hmm. break it down. So what is, for one thing, what is, you keep on saying, what is an, so what is an EP for one thing? And how does all this, like these commercials work and how do people actually find Aziz's music on Spotify? And how do we know when things are going to happen? So really break down that whole notion mm -hmm. of EP. T tell me more in, in detail about it. Well, EP is, is like an album, but, you know, to show in it, you have less songs in it to use it to promote yourself out there, to, to present yourself. You as an artist and you are new, you have a couple of songs that you put together, you, you bring it as an EP and give it to them as a compilation, you know, to introduce yourself as an artist. So from there, you can work in you know, to bring up an album or you bring another next EP or you bring a single, you know, you, you use it to connect to those people, you know, to let them know that this is the kind of work that you are doing and, you know, this is what you can give. You know, then you can bring them a book, like, like an album and then show them that this is the whole package that I have. While you have already built up your fan base and you have followers now, you have listeners, so now you can give them everything that you are working on, you know. So, but it's like you just drop a a, a a single out of your work. So, but you just do it in a sense that you have four songs in it, or you either have six songs. Some will have three, four, five, six. It depends to the person what he wanna release. At the same time, giving it to his people or the listeners out there to introduce himself. So that is EP. You know, um, yeah, for me, I think uh, it's a good idea, you know, for artists like Aziz or the artists that I'm working with, which are new, in a sense, they didn't have albums out there, they didn't have much followers, so we try to introduce them, you know, by giving a couple of songs out, you know, with biography, with the stories behind the artists, 
and people start to follow them and try to go into their history, their own stories and connect to them, then you as an artist have the chance to go on live, perform those songs while you're working behind, working for something productive. Another production which might be an album or it might be the next EP is up to the artist itself. But an, uh, an EP for me is an introduction of that artist that can use it for. Cool, cool. So basically an EP to me, it's kind of like when you sit down at a restaurant or a cafe and you see the little menu, like a, it's like a little drink menu that shows yeah. you what the different choices can be like that. And then if you really like the place, if you really like the artist, artist you can come back and get the whole menu of, of, of what they offer. I get yeah. it. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. So now how does Aziz or how does any musician, um, because obviously just like podcasting, which is what this is, or even, or YouTube, because we're also a YouTube channel here at Aaron's Opinion. There's, you know, there's a, there's a strategy for, you know, production and, and understanding the analytics of who's watching, who's listening, you know. So how do artists um, understand their audience and how do they understand the analytics and how do, how do artists like, like Aziz make these critical choices, these critical plays, you know, on the chessboard? How does that really work? Um, well, for Aziz is totally a different case than the other artists. For Aziz, I think, as we said before, is his humanity, you know, his humbleness and the way he reached people. You know, he got so much followers on his Facebook and other social medias and the way he interact with those people. You know, he tried to bring up his stories to them. You know, so this, make it easier for them to follow him. You know, you have different artists and they have different ways of promoting themselves or get connected to their audience or their listeners. So, but Aziz is something unique. He is taking it step by step and he is not rushing everything, you know, try to force it, but he is trying to put a strategy behind it, which he knows, you know, it, it will work. You know, he don't need to force it, but he can work very hard on his music and make sure that that music, when he plays it for the people and they will listen to it and they can get given the feedback. From there, he can work, you know, to make himself better or to, to see how he can open, open up his arms and make it wider to reach more people. So it's just a start that we started and we're going to all get our experience in it. We have... Uh, we have people also who are supporting us, you know, who are doing, who are musicians and they are, they are behind us. And I think with their support, we're going to make something great out there because the artist is definitely a good, good artist. He's a good singer, you know, so we have, we have uh, musicians whom, you know, the, 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 the instrument players and they are behind us and they're supporting, which is really good, you know. It's really amazing. Where did you find all of those great instrumentalists, by, by the way? Um, here in Germany. I met, I met them here in Germany. That is good. That is good. Yeah, because they're great. They're, those people are really, um, you know, the amount of support that Aziz has is really, is really stellar and really stunning. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, really, really, really fascinating. And um, okay, and then um, what can you tell me, like, how does the publication process work in Germany? Each country has different laws about producing music and things like that. What, what have you come to understand about the, um, you know, German laws and, and, and publication laws and kind of the entertainment laws in Germany? What, well, what can you speak on that? Yeah, th this is what I'm trying to explain because... We, we just started and um, we're working with these people as such uh, stars. They've been into the industry for so long and they know the industry. So through them, we are working with them and we are listening to them, you know, our songs and, you know, they, they, they work on all the laws and all those stuff in the industry. So through that, we also try to build up our foundation as a Scaraba production, you know, to present ourselves and try to make sure that we also do the right thing and go through the laws and, you know, but the industry itself 
I think uh, there is no much difference, in it, you know. So there is a legal part of it, you know, and that is why we are we, we are following, you know, to 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 register ourselves as a musician. I also try to be paying tax in it, and the music that we are releasing, we make sure that every instrument players who are there or the singer, they have their royalties in it, you know. So basically, it's. It's, it's, it's almost the same because most of the things that we are doing now is all on, on, on the social media, it's on the internet. That we you have to you post music more on the internet than than before, that you have to go vinyls and CDs or selling it on the on, on, on shops and all those stuff. So yeah, you have to register everything that you are doing now and we are doing it with selected stars, you know, which we are thankful for that they are behind us and supporting that. Right, right. Absolutely. That's, that, is re- that is really, really fascinating. I, de- I, I definitely understand uh, what, what you mean. Yeah, now with, now with everything being on social media, it's, it, it, it's, on one hand, it's a lot easier for, for musicians, but it's also a lot harder because there's far more competition now than, yeah. than there ever was. Yeah, de- definitely. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and then uh, obviously Aziz deserves to be monetized. So like, how does, you know, how do all these songs actually make money for, for, for Aziz in the end? How does monetization work in music? Well, that is where the question is, because I think, I think um, the first thing that we are trying to look for is how to sell that, that artist to have those listeners. Because nowadays is it's about how many listeners you have, how many play you are, mm-hmm. and and this is where you got to work. And, and um, for you to be known, it's a very hard work out there because you have to you have to see this way that every minute people are posting songs. There is hundreds of hundreds of songs which have been uploaded out there. So the competition is so high and. Um, the social media, or all those Spotify and all those stuff, you know, what you gain out of it need to be a very hard work and there should be a lot of listeners behind you for you to have that income that has to come in. But the most, the good thing is if that artist can sell himself and have some live shows, live concerts, you know, this can help him. This can help him to generate income for himself. So we're trying to 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 um, put that trademark out there as Aziz and try to get more followers for him, more listeners for him. You know, it's just the beginning, and this is the first project that we heard. And I think along the road, then we will see how it works for us. Yeah. You know, basically, we're trying to put that talent out there first before talking about the money and how much we are gaining. You know, because the sun is up to drop on the 27th of this month. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, the EP itself will be will be available. So from there, then we will know how much people are following it. So we we'll also do our best to, to promote it and try to reach as many people as we can. But the royalty is there for the artist, you know, as, as the text is the person who wrote the, the song, you know, to have his benefit out of it. But how much that will be? I definitely don't know. Right, right. So basically, you you as the producer can launch some sort of monetization feature behind the music, but the amount that will actually be netted and earned is primarily determined based on probably the download rate mostly and the impressions and then the overall, the audience size overall. Is probably what determines it. Yeah, yeah. So it's very similar to podcasting, actually. That's a similar model to how it works on a podcast. You have your downloads and you have your impressions and the impressions are what creates the revenue. So the Mm -hmm. more downloads I get, the more impressions. It's all a big, a big complicated equation. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, That's all, all really, really, really good, you know. What are um in, in in addition to or apart from a lot of the music that Aziz is giving you, what are some other uh, genres of music that that interest you? You know, maybe maybe you don't personally produce it, but what's a genre of music that you still find interesting or that you want to learn more about as a producer? Well, I will I would say the um 
African fusion, you know, Af African music, you know, the, the roots of Africa, like um, like um, Afro Manding. These are these are musics that our elders used to play, you know, and these are the kind of music I will definitely love to learn more and and and, and get into like uh, Salfi Katar, you know, uh, Maria Makebar and those kind of musics, you know, we got a lot of them in Africa, especially in West Africa, mm -hmm. to, to, to make them, modernize them and bring them to, to the standards uh, right now to reach the audience right now, the listeners right now, you know. And yeah. uh, I love jazz music also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I like those kind of music and reggae music, of course, you know, reggae music, of course. So beautiful. So, yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know what you would, you know what I'm sure you would love um, is uh, what's known because you know that I'm, I'm a French speaker, je parle français. And in, and in French culture and in French society, mm -hmm. there's of course the concept of, of la musique raille, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard of this, where they, they'll take a common song Mm -hmm. Usually it's done by an Arabic speaker or not, or, or it can also be done by a French person who also speak, sings in Arabic and French. But you take you take a song usually from like Morocco mm -hmm. or, or Northern Africa, the, the Maghreb, as it's called, and you sing, you know, a verse in French and, and then a verse in Arabic and then a verse in English and then you loop it back and things like that. That's very common. And some of these uh, pieces in, as I say, La Musique Raille, are mm -hmm. are very 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 beautiful and very interesting a lot of instrumentation technical stuff percussion you know so it's from a technical standpoint it's very interesting what's what's your opinion of that by the way yeah um, <clears throat> uh, i know i know some some couple of artists who are doing that kind of music who are uh, taken from other cultures and trying to try to fuse them Mm -hmm. music and and and, and uh, try to make them much more to their own understanding express them a little bit different you know so um i i, I love those kind of music in general i think creativity is is the is the most important thing in music you know right. so, yeah creativity is very important in the music you know we have a, we have an artist here called zaza you know, he is doing that kind of fuse. You know, he try to fuse different kind of music in his music. You know, take it from Africa, put some jazz in, try to take some Arabic, you know, instruments you know, in it and stuff like this. You know, give it a, a different taste. You know, so um, it is interesting. Really. It's extremely. It's it's extremely interesting. Yeah, I've interviewed a lot of musicians actually here in the states. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them was a was a young woman who is a country music singer, American country. And um, her music was professionally produced, um, not, not by you, but, you know, by, by an American company. But mm -hmm. I noticed that she really, um, like Aziz, she's also incredibly gifted, um, incredibly blessed and gifted uh, with her musical ability, all, all, all in the same. My question to you is, so as I move forward in life and I encounter other great musicians, um, you know, and they, if they come to me and say, you know, I put out all these EPs, I put out all this stuff and right. nobody's really jumping on the bandwagon. What what could I say to encourage them or what professional advice would you give that person? Yeah. Love what you do. You know, so Karis, if you do something to expect people to love it, you mm -hmm. must love it first. You have to be the person who have to be a fan of yourself. And you have to like your own music and you have to listen to yourself a lot. You know, so um because I think I think out there there is so many people who will love what you what they are doing. You just have to try to find the way how to reach those people. You have to find your own listeners. Who are the people who listen to your music and what kind of lyrics they like, what kind of song text they like and melodies they like, and you, you try to read them with that. 
you know, you try to make yourself better and, you know, to reach those kind of people, you know, because it's all about the listeners that you want to reach as a musician or as an artist, you know, so being into the industry is not easy because there is so many competition out there, so many talented artists out there, you know, so to be an outstanding one, you have to work harder. Every day you got to work more harder and make sure that, you know, you don't give up. You know, you, you will have ups and downs. You know, it's good also that people don't like what you do. And for you to, for you to learn from that, that the people don't like what they don't like from you. You know, for you to make that better of yourself. You know, so too much expectation should not be there too, you know, because you have to work it step by step to try to reach those people out there and try to present yourself. I think basically is is the work that you have to put behind the songs that you are going to produce. You make sure that they are good, good songs that you have to produce and you have to love it yourself first. That's so beautiful. I can, could not agree with you more when you said that you need to learn what people do not like about you. That's that is that's great advice for any person on, on the planet. You need to learn what people don't like before you can accept what they do like. Absolutely. That that is really good advice, man. That is that is such good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. So um, now that you've been living in Germany all these years, are you a uh, are you completely comfortable speaking in German when you need to? Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, um, yeah, German is, is, is my second language, I would say now, because I have two kids here, mm -hmm. one and grown up here, so we speak German, and at work we speak German, and it's over, German is over, I'm definitely comfortable of speaking German. That's really good. Yeah. Aziz Aziz was telling me how hard it was for him to transition from Gambia to Germany, having to learn German, having to work really hard each day. All the all all the changes he said were really were really overwhelming at first, and it took him a took him a bit of time to get used to it. You know, it's it's a big change for 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 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's language. That is it's always like that. Me. There is no difference with me also because mm -hmm. since I came here, I never know German. I can't speak German. So coming here is a challenge, you know, because you need to communicate, you need to understand, you know, to, to solve your own problems, you need to speak that language, you know. So German being a language that is not being spoken in most of the countries in the world, not like English and French or Spanish or Portuguese. That's true. You know, so you will find it a bit difficult, especially if you come from an English language speaking country or French speaking country, you know, to transform yourself from, from that yeah. language to German. You know, but I find it very interesting because language is something that you can easily learn it when you speak it. You mm -hmm. know, when you're open about it, as we said, you need to make mistakes and you need to learn from that. So by speaking it, you always learn. You have to communicate, you have to get closer to people whom you know they are Germans and they speak that language. So they got to be your friends and you got to talk to them. You know, so you can learn a lot out of it. But I'm comfortable definitely. I learned, you know, on my journey. I went to school to learn it also, you mm -hmm. know, to speak it. So it, it it make it easier for me, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, now I'm I'm a very comfortable I'm very comfortable speaking French when I go to France now. But you're absolutely right. It takes a long time of going to the country, talking to the people, having a lot of conversations over years. It takes a long time, de definitely. I know I ask disease this. What's your favorite German food or your favorite your favorite German meal? Your favorite German dish that you love to have when you want to have a great meal? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I hmm, I like schnitzel. Uh huh. Me too. I love it. I love schnitzel. <laughs> yes, love it. Love it with a nice cold beer. Nothing like it. Nothing yeah. like it. I like schnitzel. I like schnitzel. And um, mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, I eat. I eat my own food a lot. I eat. 
I eat more of Gambian's food, you know, yeah. But I like one of the other food that I love is schnitzel, you know, definitely. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Someone uh, someone from the public audience just came in and sat down here. So yeah, that's that's really, really good. I, I, I agree with you. Schnitzel is incredible and the German, German beer is incredible. But um, I always like to freak people out about this. What about, um, do you eat in, in Germany? I'm sure they probably eat something similar. Do you have a dish in Germany where you take the um, the organ meat or the kidneys of like a cow and you chop it up into little pieces and put it in a sauce and eat it? Um, never eat that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. In, so so in one. French, yeah. so in, in French society, in France, we have this dish that I had the last time I was there called Royon de Vaux, which is basically the, the kidneys of a baby cow and they put it uh, into a, a sauce and eat it with rice. It is so good. So, so uh, good. Yeah. How do you taste? Is it taste good? It tastes like it, it's not gross. It just tastes like it basically just tastes like meat is what it tastes like. But it has a very organ like texture and then a very rich sauce. And then I have it with a special beer, a special beer that goes with it. It's just it's just incredible. <laughs> I oh mean, you just you just you just if you go to France, man, you just have to have that dish. You know? yeah. yeah. Have you have you been to the States before, by the way? Um, no. No, yeah. No. Okay. All right. Well, been, that's too bad. Yeah. I've been I've been more in, in Europe and, and, and Africa, but mm -hmm. America not yet. Okay. All right. Well, wonderful. So what other countries in Africa have you been to? Well, I've been into uh, Senegal. Mm -hmm. Senegal, uh-huh. Mali. Mm -hmm. So I've been into Togo. And uh, I've also visited uh, Niger, Niamey. Uh huh. Yeah, I've been into these lands in, in West Africa. Well, that's wonderful. So you've been to a lot of the francophone countries. You've been to a lot of countries where you were hearing French a lot of the time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Those are all francophone countries. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Now, do you have acquaintances or friends in those countries, or like what? What brought you to those very specific countries? Um, I love traveling. Um, I got friends in in, in Senegal, mm -hmm. and, uh, Mali. I got I got a family there. Burkina Faso. I have a friend over there that I vis visited, and um, he took me actually to Niamey in Niger, and and also to Togo. He's the uh -huh. one who brought me to those places to see because I wanted to see the neighbors. And yeah, he, he took me to those places. But it's definitely beautiful. I love it. Definitely love it over there. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Well, okay. Um, you know what? If if you don't mind, uh do you mind because I'm sure that we're actually joined right now by uh, Mr. Williams, Mr. Wilbert, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Wilbert there in the chat, he is a great friend of Aaron's opinion, so a great friend of ours. Mm -hmm. He is actually one of the producers for a radio station here in the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing he probably has some questions for you. Um, do you mind if I unmute him and let you talk to him? Because I think he probably wants to join our conversation a little bit. Do you mind? Yeah, of course. Of course. Why not? All right. Well, let's give him a try. So, 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 Mr. Wilbert, why don't you come on over to your microphone and let's give this a second here. Let me actually, let me actually unmute him here. All right. It takes the software a minute to actually send the, you know, send the signal. Um, but he will probably have a question for you because he also loves talking about music and he's interviewed on his own show. He's interviewed many musicians uh, from reggae and from, from Jamaica and, and all over the world as well. Anyway, um, while we are doing that within the last 20 minutes here, um, you did a magnificent job. And by the way, from my heart to yours, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup for taking the time when you're not feeling well to sit in front of your microphone and put up with this for an hour. That's just so kind of you. And I just, I really appreciate you for that. Um, but do you have some questions that you really want to ask me, uh, 
Lama, and w- w- what do you really want to know about Aaron Richmond and, and, and Aaron's opinion? So what do you really want to know? Well, I I could go. I try to listen to some of your podcasts and thank you. See, 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 you know, the questions and the people, the conversations that you have. And I was definitely amazed. And I, I'm like, this is what we need, you know, to reach people out there. We need to, we need to have many people like you, especially disabled, uh-huh. or try to uh, advocate, try to speak. I would try to take on topics which you know might not be comfortable sometimes, but when I wish, when I talk about them, you know, when when people to hear them. So my question will be, um, uh, what do you think um, the disabled people, especially the blind people in 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 poorer countries, could be doing to to make life easier for them, make life better for them? What do you think? the government or the people could be doing for those people to make life easier for them? I mean, I think it really depends on the country and depends on the person. On another, I think that if more people stand up and start YouTube channels, you know, that's something I, I'm completely in support of. You know, start a Facebook page, start singing, go to YouTube, upload one video, upload one short even, you know. Some of these shorts on YouTube get more views than, than the long form videos do. So there's a lot that blind people can be doing, but one of them is get involved. Get involved in content creation. Start creating videos. Start speaking up in your community and start having a great time doing it. Start creating great videos. You know, one subscriber quickly qu- quickly grows. So that's mm-hmm. what I would truly say is that people need to just start being, start getting involved in content creation. Whether you're a musician or you like to take people around your town and show them how you're living or whatever it is, just start speaking up and start edu- and start educating other people start connecting with other people and start gaining more knowledge yourself. So that's what I really think. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's yeah. see here. Uh, why isn't it? Okay. I, I, I know, I know he has. So, so Mr. Wilbert, if, if, if you're, if, if, if the audio won't work, no problem. You can just type. Um, but I, but but Wilbert, I know you have a question. I'm 100 sure. Yeah, I, Hi, I, I, Mr. Wilbert. How, have, for one thing, Mr. Wilbert, how have you been? Um, I am fine. All things being all, equal, you know. All things, all things considered. Okay, <laughs> so I, I know, I know you have a question for Laman, Aziz Vi's producer. Go. Yeah, but I would just like, I would just like to chip in and share a, a little bit of the question that he asked earlier about what can people do, what can people with disabilities do in underdeveloped countries and developing countries. Mm-hmm. And I think you 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 touched on it, Aaron, but I would like to expand on it a little bit. Of course I think you can. a lot of us don't plan. <laughs> we need to have a plan for our lives. Mm-hmm. And having created that plan, We must work towards it. So we can't plan and then fold our hands. We have to plan and keep on working step by step. So you're you're working towards a goal, but you can only do steps A and B this year and Mm -hmm. steps C and D next year. Nothing is wrong with that, but have a plan, have a goal, and work towards achieving that goal. That is how I see it. You right. know, sure, yes. absolutely. Yes. And my my question to your guest is: What genre of music do you like, or, or do you participate in? Um, reggae music, reggae music, yeah. and um, and how has it been for you? You 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 are a musician, are you? Yes, yes, and. Um, what has been your experience like? Well, my experience in, in, in music is it brought me places that I was not expecting. It brings me friends and people mm. that I definitely 
don't expect. It give me a voice that um, I could reach so many people and I can speak out my problems or the community, the problems of my community. Mm-hmm. And reggae music is very easy to transport those kind of issues. Issues that yes. uh, are not normal in the society. What is going on wrong, whether it's political, mm-hmm. or it's, it's personal, or is your society, or your neighbors, your friends. It's, it's things that is, is surrounding you. Things that you are doing, your day-to-day work that you are seeing, this is what we use the music for, you know, yes. to, 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 to reach out there and try to talk about them, bring out topics which, you know, they are not easy to talk about. It makes it yes. easier for us, you know, to, to do that with that music of genre, that is rhythm really music, and this is what I love about it, and this is why I'm doing it also. Thank you, Aaron, for allowing me to participate. Always yeah. welcome here, Mr. Wilbur. Always welcome. I'm, I'm glad you saw the invite, and I'm glad you saw it in the group there. So. Yes. Very, very good. Very good. All right. All right, then. So anyway, um, wonderful discuss- absolutely wonderful discussion today, as always, uh, Laman. Um, and if someone, uh, you know, if someone really wants to get in touch, um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, if someone wants to learn more about, you know, your music and what you're doing, and if someone wants to get in touch with your company, how would they go about doing that? Well, I'm reachable on, on the um, Caraba Production, under the email carabaproduction at gmail.com. I'm also at Facebook as Lamin Jaune, Caraba Production. You know, so um, I have my phone numbers out there and my, my contact links are all out there. So through the in- emails, you can get all my contact numbers to Caraba Production. So it's easy to reach me and I will always get back to anybody who has reached out to me. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Well, that's, that's really good. I think that you know, after hearing this conversation, I think that a lot of other blind people around the world are going to support what you do because you're just doing the right thing, whether they're in Germany or not. So I, I think you're going to get a lot of a lot of a lot of business out of this, hopefully, and hopefully a lot more supporters and a lot more of an interest in in in, in what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you very Absolutely. much. You are so welcome. All right, everybody. All right. Well, I think that walks to the end of a, of a, of a wonderful conversation. That's basically all I have. Like I said, click the link and uh, in a few moments, I'll go over and send you a, a voice note. I'll send you a WhatsApp and explain. Um, click the link in the description. And uh, don't forget to give some, give some love to Caraba Productions. And don't forget to support Aziz VI and, uh, and, and things like that. As I like to say, I'm on the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Wilbert. And thank you to everyone else who watched and listened from all uh, all across the universe and galaxy. Thank we'll you be back soon. You're forever, forever part of the Aaron's Opinion family. It's going to be very hard for you to lose track of me now. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always happy to be you. <laughs> It, it would be it would be very hard for you to it would be very hard for me to lose interest in you. So whether you like it or not, you're stuck in my group now permanently. <laughs> I'll appreciate that. I'll appreciate that. All right, man. All right. Well, let's well let's let's go over in a moment, in a few moments, in a couple minutes. I'll catch up with you on WhatsApp and we'll get some stuff set up. All right. Anyway, right. awesome conversation. Take care, everyone. Keep singing, keep producing great songs, keep podcasting, keep doing all this great stuff. Take care, everybody. Help one person today, help one million people tomorrow if you're still watching on youtube don't forget like the video on youtube comment below share it subscribe it tickle the bell notification to know when we go live next right here on aaron's opinion don't forget you can join the public facebook group aaron's opinion podcasting community uh and as i like to say in the intros and outros aaron's opinion six at gmail.com one two four zero six eight one nine eight six nine Aaron Richmond, Aaron's opinion. Take care, everybody. We'll be, we'll be back soon and have, a, and have a great day. So take care and help one person today. Help one million people.